Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to make a scattering tool, a mesh scattering tool. This would be good for if you were creating environments and you wanted some objects that you wanted randomly dispersed on the scene. It could be rocks, it could be trees. In this case, we're just using cubes and we're controlling the random scatter on the X and Y. The height, the Z, as I'm controlling it by just dragging it up and down. I'm going to do a separate tutorial on how we can have the Z lock in to the, the ground level like that. And this can be any item scattered on any environment. So it's kind of cool and I think it's a very useful effect to have. So, and it doesn't take very long to make it. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to start from scratch and I'm just going to go to new project. And we can just do this in first person. And this might take about 10 minutes, but I'll try to go as fast as I can. We'll also be touching on construction scripts and macros real fast. So it's important to know those as well. Otherwise your code ends up starting to get real messy. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go in the content browser and we're gonna create a blueprint class and actor. And I'll just double click on it. And all we're gonna be working in really is the construction script. We don't need to do the event graph or the viewport. So there is that. So here we are. Everything we're going to do is in here. One thing about a construction script when it's a blueprint class and there's instances of it, it runs every time there's a change to the instance. So if the instance is moved, it runs. If it's updated in any way, it runs every time there's an update in the, the position or location or the instance itself. So every time we move our instance in the scene, it will update. It'll be called this script. So anyway, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create two variables. The first one is going to be called scatter distance, and it's going to be a float. So we come in here and select float, and we definitely want this public because it's going to be instance editable. And then we're going to click this and make another variable, and this one is going to be called number of items. And this though is going to be an integer because there are whole numbers and then we'll compile and save that. And then we're going to make a macro just to make a macro. So really what it's going to be doing is this is really the heart of the scatter effect. We're just going to make it as a macro just to keep our screen from getting so cluttered up. So on this we're going to have three inputs. So we come over here to inputs and we, the first one I'll just call S1 and it's going to be a float. It's going to be a float. I guess you have to double click these. And then we'll add two more. And we'll call this S2. And then we're going to call this one S3. And then we need two outputs. And this is going to be X location. I'll just call it X because it has to fit on the node. And this is going to be Y. And that's our inputs and outputs. And then what we need, we just need five things. So we're just going to right click and we're going to go random int on range. Not random int, but random float in range. And we need two of these, so I'll press Control D to make another one. And then to keep the tool in the center of everything, what we're going to need to do is divide it by two. So we're going to get divide here. And then we're going to subtract that from here. So we need two subtract nodes. Subtract two of these. So then I can press, click this and press Control D. So I'll kind of explain this as I hook it up and then it'll make more sense. So this is going to take the scattering values that we input. It's going to set them the max distance and it's going to give us randomness and this is going to be the number that we're going to divide this by two so that our tool is in the center of the action and so we're going to divide the value that we enter for the distance and then that number which is going to be the halfway point we're going to subtract it over here from our location sir so we put this here and put this in there and you can take a screenshot of this in case it doesn't uh, make that much sense but it, it'll make more sense later 
And that's all we have to do. And that's essentially our scattering function on the x and y, but not the z, which is our up and down position. So now if we jump back into the construction script, there's just a few things that we need to do here. The first thing we're going to do is drag our get number of items here and we're going to run a for loop on this so we're going to go for loop and we want a flow control for loop not a for each loop and what it's going to do we'll set the first index to one and what's going to happen is the amount of items we want we want this loop to run that many times so it'll create we put 20, it's going to loop 20 times. And then that's all we need to do there. And then the next thing we do is we're going to drag in our scatter function that we just built. And then we're going to drag in our scatter distance here and get it. And we're going to plug this in here to all three of these. So instead of having five boxes of stuff on our screen, now we just have one. And if we want to edit the macro, we can double click into it. So it's just a real nice way to keep things cleaner on our screen. And then the last thing we need is the random, another random float in range right here. And this is going to be for our rotation. So we're going to set the max value here to 360. It's 360, right? Okay, so the last thing we need, we're, we're pretty much done is just to add our items. So we'll go add a static mesh component here. The mesh component that you choose to use is completely up to you. You can make some really far out stuff. We'll just use a I don't know. <laughs> let's just use a let's just use a door. We can use anything we want. And now the last thing we gotta do is just hook all this up. So on the for loop this is our executable wire so that goes in there. And then on our relative transform, we need to split this. So we're going to right click and go split. And what we want to do is be able to plug in. So we have our location, rotation, and scale. So scale, all the items are going to be one, a unit size of one. So we're just, we're not doing anything with the size of the item. So we're going to leave that alone. The rotation and the orient, the rotation of the orientation of the item, we want them all in different directions. So what we would do is right click here and split this pin and then we're just going to plug this in so that all our items will be randomly rotated on the X, Y, and Z on the roll, pitch, and yaw. And then the last thing is we'll come up here and right click on this and split this pin. We're not going to be, the Z will control the up and down, the height of the item. We're not controlling that right now, we're just controlling the left and right and near and far so that's going to be our X and our Y and that is it that's the whole thing so if you want to take a screenshot of that we'll compile and save and then let me come over and dock that well if I come in here and I drag this onto the scene we're not going to see anything because we don't have any values in over here. So here, for the number of items, let's say we want 15. Now you'll see them now, but they're all jumbled up. All our doors are jumbled up. And here, for our scattering distance, we can put in like 2,000. And see, there's all our doors. Now notice, every time I move this, it changes because it's an update, so the construction script runs every time that there's a change. And that's it. It's just a really nifty, cool effect. Now right now I'm controlling the, the height of this myself, but if we want to create an effect like landscaping with rocks and we want these on the ground, well I could just drag it manually, but there's also a way we can set it up. This will work down here because we're kind of on a level surface, but if it was an uneven surface, then you know, we would have things buried in the ground. So if we want things to be on an unlevel surface, we can use a line trace function so that these items don't get buried and they all stay on the surface. So I'll show how to do that in the next 
in another tutorial. I do it right now, but it's just going to take too much time. But this gets you going with the basic tool. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care. Have a great day. And I will talk to you next time.